your teams get ready to go. Shoot, pro, shoot, pro. State in your opinion, are you serious, bro? Shoot, pro, shoot, pro. Talking about some wrestling for just a little bit. Uh, shoot, pro, shoot, pro. Tagged explicit so we can say shit. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're in internet land. Welcome to another edition of Shoot Promo, the only wrestling game show in the world. I'm your host, Red Reddington. We have another two teams of three wrestling fanatics ready to dissect, discuss, and dilute the past week of wrestling. So let's get on and uh, have a look at the six teams. Uh, team A this week is Japanese Tables Incorporated and is captained by Goldeneye. The World Series starts today, so go Rangers. <laughs> uh, joining Golden Iron, his team is uh, the man with the biggest memory in shoot promo history. It's terrorizing. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, and also joining Golden Eye is the biggest foreign heel in Team Speak history. It's JP. Kono table wa totemo ii desu. <laughs> I have no idea what he said, but I'm sure it, it's worth an explicit tag. And taking them on this week on the other side is the Alphas and the Omega. Uh, their team captain, of course, is Omega BRR. Yes, my two Alphas as teammates, and I, of course, am the Omega. <laughs> so he's not. In case you needed that spelled out. <laughs> we but see what you, you did already there. knew that. We saw what you did there. Um, and joining Omega this week is the always minty fresh mint. When people with lisps say business, you know what they mean business. <laughs> Especially if you're Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> and rejoining us all the way from the old style of shoot promo is Mr. Manic Misanthrope. More inane than Black Snow, more insane than Taz, and more intoxicated than Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> It's like an amalgamation in one. Okay, well, let's just go through the rules for people who are new to the show. Uh, the teams will attempt to answer questions about the past week in wrestling, as well as taking part in some more improvisational rounds. Along the way, they'll be awarded points for being funny, positive, and original, whilst having points deducted for moaning, groaning, and making, you know, sweeping, generalized statements. Um... Points will be awarded and deducted with accompanying sounds. For example, if a team says something funny, they'll be awarded one point, and they'll hear this noise. Oh god, that's a little bit loud. Um, if they see something funnier, they'd be awarded two points, which sounds like this. Oh god, my spleen! <laughs> <laughs> if they say something hilarious, uh, they'd be awarded three points, which sounds like this. <laughs> On the other hand, if they start drifting too far off topic or say something terribly unfunny, um, or refuse to answer a question, I'll deduct points, which sounds like this. <laughs> Right, so let's... <laughs> Cobra has a good point. We do have a live studio audience. Oh, that's a, that is a good point. I forgot to mention, we do have our live studio audience, as always, who are here to uh, boo, cheer, and possibly get picked for next week's team. So say hello, studio audience. Windows are already ready. Hello, D hello studio. D low, D low. Head, 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 head. <laughs> okay, well, this seeing as nothing... Seeing as none of our players had any trouble with immigration, we can start, as usual, with winners and losers. Uh, this opening round allows the panel to build up an early lead for their team by each of them telling us who they feel were this week's biggest winners and or losers. For example, you could say that this week's biggest winner was Jim Ross because he was hired back to the WWE and allowed on Raw to compete in the main event. You could also say that this week's biggest loser was Jim Ross because he had to wear that ridiculous jersey dress up to do so. Uh, so, panel, who do you feel were this week's biggest winners and or losers? Let's go over to Japanese Tables Incorporated. Let's start with Goldeneye, your winners and losers for this week. I feel like this week's biggest winner 
has to be Jack Swagger. Even though he lost the match versus Zack Ryder, I believe, he managed to be a foreign heel, like a reverse foreign heel, which is probably one of the first in wrestling history, you know, other than Toto Americano. But anyways, um, this week's biggest loser has to be, in my honest opinion, the TNA Galaxy. I mean, you know, the thing about it is that, you know, you get that last pay-per-view with Hogan turning face and revealing that, and basically revealing that he's going to be in the company for a long time. Um, You know, him and Sting teaming up, and then I'm not going to reveal the spoilers, but um, what has been revealed to happen. So basically, what the fuck, TNA? I'll give you a bonus point there for uh, keeping act, though I'm not sure exactly how long that will last for. Let's flip over to the other side, the Alphas and Omega. Omega, your winners and or losers this week. Well, I'm going to have to go the cliche route and say this week's biggest winner was, of course, Hulk Hogan, who, you know, still at his ripe old age, he still managed to bring back the spirit of Hulkamania and get the crowd excited. Granted, it was about 2,000 people waiting for the train to Allentown, but... Uh, and, you know, never before have I seen such a, a you know, a 58-year-old get such a reaction since David Hasselhoff announced this year that he would be in both the classic film Hop and then, of course, the sequel to Piranha 3D, that being Piranha 3D-D. <laughs> and then uh, this week's biggest loser, sadly, is, of course, uh, Bobby Roode, who had to lose that match to Kurt Angle so, so, uh, unceremoniously you know never before have i seen such a 34 year old get so embarrassed since uh aj piersky the baseball player appeared for tna way back in 2005 and then came back in 2007 only to face lance hoyt his mortal enemy once again i'll give you a point for mentioning tna and in a slightly favorable light um Okay, let's go back to the other side. So you giving him a point for Vance Archer. I've given him points for Vance Archer. I like Lance Hoyt. I, I, I should be, you know, Lance Hoyt, Zack Ryder, guaranteed point winners on this show. Uh, let's go over to the other side. Let's go to Terrorizing, your winners and or losers. Well, I'm going to start with this week's losers first. And for losers, I would have to say are uh, the fans of wrestling. For one, having to watch a cold match again. And... Two, uh, after Bound for Glory, it looks like the only competition for WWE is going to go down the toilet. And that just doesn't exactly help WWE to be good. And they can continue to be ridiculously bad and still get money. Cause they have a monopoly. Okay, um, let's... I'm assuming you're not going to do any winners. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about winners. <laughs> it's winners and or losers, so you can, you can do one or the other, but go ahead, winners. No, no, no I'll, I'll do winner. Um, this week's winner, I would have to say, is JR for making, for one, being rehired, and two, making Cole look even worse than he already does, and generally just making it an actual fun match. Oddly yeah, I have to say JR is always, always good for a bit of high spirits. Um, let's go flip over to the other side. Let's go to Mint, your winners and or losers. To be brutally honest, before we go actually on to that, I can honestly picture Hogan and Bischoff going... Regardless... Winners this week was the WWE. I just found out that, you know, they're spending the most maximum amount possible in their uh, drug rehabilitation by keeping, you know, Robocop, Razor Cop, whatever you want to call him, Scott Hall alive. It's actually quite great and sober. The loser this week would be Melon Mascaras, whatever you want to call him. While Mexico is probably a really hot country, the rest of the world was quite mild when he was inducted into, you know, when told he was going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Who the fuck cares? No, you gotta have spicy. You can't just have <laughs> mild. 
I was going to give you an ex, uh, going to give you an extra point there, but I decided against it for some reason. I can't remember what it was for. Uh, I remember later. Okay, let's move on to the other side. Let's go to JP. Uh, your winners and or losers. Well, this week's. I actually have two biggest winners for this week, uh, D'Lo Brown and Al Snow. Both were appearing on uh, the TNA's Bound for Glory without really being told about it, uh, or us being told about it, actually, and uh, getting probably the biggest reaction of the night from the Philadelphia crowd, and actually making the arena sound like it was actually filled. Um, this week's biggest loser... Hmm... I just want to say the entirety of TNA because of the pay-per-view last night, but I can't really just blame it all on all of TNA, because at least half of them want to do it. So, probably I'll just call this week's Biggest Losers Immortal and be done with it. Yeah, I mean, it's going from bad to worse, I think, Immortal. It's steadily losing members. They've gone... They used to have 17, and now they're down to, what, 5? Yeah, I don't... We yeah, want Fred like, Phelps. Like, they've gone through more members than every incarnation of the NWO, and that's saying something. So, we're going to, are we going to change their name from Immortal to Slightly Beetle? <laughs> uh, well, I think, I think they're, right now, they're more like a uh, gelatinous blob. With no they be... So, they were that uh, blob character from Monsters vs. Aliens. It'd be that's like re regenerative, regenerative health if you hide behind cover. That would be a better name. For them, it's, like it's, that. it's <laughs> hyphenated. It's no, I'm mortal. <laughs> You're gonna have a bonus point for that. There we go. You got your bonus point back. Let's and last but by no means least, let's go to Manic Missions Web. Your winner and or loser. Uh, this week, no, it's gonna be Kurt Angle for retaining the TNA title for whatever that's worth with an injury, which is really inspirational. I mean, and he's still. Insisting he's going to the Olympics in 2012. With a broken neck. Not just that. I mean, if he gets hit by a truck and is turned into a brain in the jar, he will demand to be connected to the internet, and his first action would be to tweet that he's going for the Paralympics. Well, he's this, already been hit by a tree. <laughs> this week's loser is probably going to be Ricardo Rodriguez for blowing the biggest opportunity for heel heat he's ever had in his home country. By announcing Alberto Del Rio in Spanish, he missed the perfect troll to announce him in English. How could I... you fuck that up? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I was laughing so hard when you said um, Kurt Angle <laughs> Kurt Angle, head in the jar, Paralympics. I'm going to give you an extra point for that, because that should have been a two-point gag. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the scores after that round. Uh, currently in the lead with 14 points are the Alphas and the Omegas, and failing slightly behind with 11 points are Japanese Tables Incorporated. Um, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> We move on to our Woo! second round, which is the WWE round. Um, and this week, it's all about parties. So, uh, team captains, who have you decided to take on the WWE round? Uh, let's let's go to those uh, slightly behind. Goldeneye, who have you picked to do the WWE round this week? Me. He booked himself to be pleased with this. And Omega, who have you picked to answer the WWE round? I'm going with uh, Manic Misanthrope. Okay. Manic and Goldeneye. Here we go. Uh, your question is, uh, this week in Mexico, John Cena announced that he can not only count to 10, but that he will be facing Alberto Del Rio in a last man standing match. Now, is it just me, but last week the superstars walked out, then they walked back in, in, out, in, out, and then Lauren Orr sh shook the main event about. Um, and now we're having a match where the last one to stand up is the loser. I mean, is WWE essentially booking based on children's parties? Or is that just a bad segue into a round? If so, what children's games would most likely make it into the main event as big pay-per-view gimmick matches? <laughs> so what children's games would most likely make it into the main event as big pay-per-view gimmick matches? Uh, let's go to those trailing behind at the moment. Let's go to GoldenEye first. 
Well, if you remember Eugene, then you will more than likely remember the fact that he played musical ch in one of the best games of musical chairs ever played with Chris Jericho and Tomko for a world title shot. I mean, I felt like I was the only one who liked that segment. I mean, that oh, and Ric Flair, and Jonathan Coachman, and Tajiri, and, and Stacy Keebler. Stacy Keebler, you know, all all of them. But here's some more. Considering um, we're getting into all this stuff, what about okay? What about where the ring, the mat is lifted off the the ring and instead replaced with a pool, and the main event would be a bunch of pool games. So you would have um, Marco Polo as the world championship in a special Marco Polo ladder match where the person who is um, who is covering his eyes has to go Marco Polo Marco Polo while the other person has to grab the title without the and if the Marco Polo person notices that the person is out of the water trying to grab the title he can call fish out of water and it repeats it repeats until somebody finally gets the title. <laughs> that was the weirdest booking I've ever done. I've ever done. I will give you. I'll give you an extra point. You missed one person out of the Eugene um, uh, musical chair segment. If you can Who name that, if you can name that one person, I'll give oh. you a bonus point. No, I cannot remember. Sorry. It was recently arrested Tyson Tomko. Tyson Tomko was the... Was I mentioned the... Tomko. Oh, did you? What? Okay, well, you can have a point then. Go ahead. I'm just giving them out for three. Let's go over to the <laughs> other side. Um, I've forgotten who's tackling. Oh, it's Manic Missing Throat. Manic, uh, your children's game in the pay-per-view main event. Okay, since W have abandoned the idea of building up a title match, you might as well decide who's the number one contender on the game, on the day, I mean by an elaborate game of Duck, Duck, Goose. Whoever is the authority figure at the time will line up the entire roster and go Duck, 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 jobbing to Cena. Duck, <laughs> Duck, Duck, buried by Triple H. Duck, Duck, Champ. <laughs> Champ. I just, I have to, I have to imagine that you know, that you're suggesting this is not the way they currently do things. Well, the other idea is, of course, uh, the uh, arena floor is made of lava match. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem with that is they already do that for the Divas matches anyway. <laughs> no. and that still would be like the ring on. is made of lava in that case. <laughs> this may be the one John Morrison can win. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Uh, at the end of that round, uh, still um, ahead on 19 um, points are the Alphas and Omegas. Uh, training behind on 15 points are Japanese Tables Incorporated. Uh, question from the just, audience. Just oh. one thing from the audience. Um, I am sorely disappointed nobody mentioned pin the title on a Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I am also kind of disappointed that uh, no, neither of you mentioned that the championship scrabble, scramble is basically a restricted and rules-oriented game of tag. <laughs> I have to say, RMD, that was a fantastic suggestion. Two points for the audience. Yeah. Uh, to, be, uh, to be fair, we're all still shocked at the fact that Kurt Angle won, even though Bobby Wood's hand was on the ropes or something. We're still shocked, and we're waiting for Dixie Carter to reverse the decision. We're still in the arena after how many days now? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's move on. Now. Let's move on. We move on to our next round where the teams delve into the only newspaper solely dedicated to wrestling, the Wrestling Gazette, founded in 1863 by the three oldest men in wrestling, Terry Funk, Jake Roberts, and Jerry Lynn. Uh, the paper contains all sorts of all sorts from stories, advertisements, classifieds, and of course the cryptic crossword. So I'd like the teams to uh, delve in and tell me what they can find in this week's edition of the Wrestling Gazette. Um, it was a free for all, so anyone can jump in. Um, away you go, essentially. Uh, how I do the amazing uh, stretch submission hold by Matt Classic. Circa 18, or actually circa 1900. 
I wanted to do the jumble, but it turns out it's just a picture of Dixie Carter's brain. The crossword puzzle. Okay, let's see. Eight across. What is another word that the average wrestler does with Cena? Job. What is the word that the average person does with Triple H? Job. What do I need to get? Job. Okay, finished. How to save your <laughs> heat bill by Vicky Guerrero. <laughs> Jamie Lynn turns 150. Nobody gives a fuck. EC Dub. EC Dub. Any more for any more? Uh, El Generico makes special appearance on Botchamania. News at 11. <laughs> I found it ironic that the classifieds had uh, about half of the TNA roster actually looking for work. <laughs> 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 Funny, I saw the same thing about uh, superstars. <laughs> oh, and the mentioned. SmackDown audience. <laughs> we did the SmackDown audience joke before. Go to mention me young on page three. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's end it there. On that note, um, let's have a look at the scores after that round on 24 points, still in the lead, uh, dominating this That's show so far. The Alphas and Omegas with 24 points and slightly behind with 19 points are Japanese Tables Incorporated. Um, let's move on. We're going to our TNA round, which uh, this week is about hardcore wrestling. Um, so which member of the team have you head, selected head, to tackle? Head, 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 head. <laughs> Which member of the team have you selected to uh, tackle a question on hardcore wrestling? Team captains. Head, head, yes. Damn, I didn't know that hardcore wrestling uh, involved Mickey James all the time. Um, okay, uh, Omega, who have you picked to tackle a TNA question? Well, I'll fall on the grenade and do it myself. Oh, good man. Falling, going down with the ship. And uh, Goldeneye on your side? Hardcore JP. Okay. <laughs> oh, great. I just got thrown a grenade. Okay, well, here is your question. At Bound for Glory this week, there were three no disqualification matches. That was three more than there were at Hardcore Justice! Uh, some of the spots included <laughs> Chris Daniels threatening to murder, murder AJ live on pay-per-view. Uh, Chris Daniels almost removing AJ Styles' eye live on pay-per-view. And Chris Daniels stabbing a turnbuckle live on pay-per-view. Essentially, this was bound for murder. Um, it seems the further WWE moves away from hardcore wrestling, uh, TNA gets closer and closer. So what kind of spots and matches would you expect to see in the AJ... Daniel's feud... Uh, uh, I'll do that again. So, so what kind of spots and matches would you expect to see as the AJ Daniels feud reaches new levels of violence over the coming months? Uh, let's go to those who are slightly behind. Let's go to JP first. What kind of uh, violence will you expect to see over the next coming months? Uh, well... Considering I don't think that it's actually been done yet on the TNA pay-per-view, because uh, I, I don't remember the original Hardcore Justice at all, um, there will probably end up being a uh, Flaming Table spot. Uh, there will probably end up being uh, I, a tying down of one of the two guys and just beating the living hell out of them with something. Uh, probably because Dixie's into that sort of thing. Um, and there will probably end up being something that goes so far that it'll end up being like the ECW uh, Raven Sandman uh, incident that happened way back when, which probably won't even get TNA shut down, uh, even though they'll do it live on pay-per-view, just because they have that weird immunity to getting shut down. It's like written in their contract somewhere, you know, we can't be shut down ever. Um, okay, let's flood over to the other side. Uh, the originator of violence, Omega BR. Well, I think, first of all, for this to 
really turn into a feud, you have to have the token mixed tag team match. So let's have AJ team with Mickey James and Daniels team with Winter in a match where uh, everyone has a scalpel. Although it turns out this match is really just an excuse to give Mickey a vaginoplasty. And then, of course, we have, um, let's take a page out of the Saw movies and put AJ in the reverse bear trap from Saw. And the only way to unlock it is to grab the key, which is hanging from a pole. <laughs> and finally, let's have, let's just go whole hog, give both men guns, and they have a, a good old-fashioned Wild West duel, which unfortunately ends up with both men being shot in the head and put out of their misery. Although, curiously enough, this didn't actually happen live on camera. It happened backstage at about 2 a.m. with uh, an, a couple of Bibles sitting next to them. Ooh. In the words of Mario Party, Draw! Fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I mean, wow! I mean, you... you, you... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, not sure if we'll have you on the show again. It's pretty bad over there. It, it, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, dude, he... that's like totally hardcore, man. EC dub. EC <laughs> dub. <laughs> At the end of the, that round, um, the Jesus. Alphas and Omega. The Alphas and Omegas are surprisingly still in the lead with 28 points. Uh, Japanese Tables Incorporated are still behind with 23 points. Uh, it's still all, all to play for. Uh, we're going in, We're going into another uh, free for all round right now. Um, it's a new round. We've called it Wrestling Recast. Uh, throughout the years, various wrestlers have made the transition from wrestler to movie star. Such former world champions as Hulk Hogan, Kurt Angle, The Rock... David Arquette have all jumped from the squared circle to the silver screen as they lay the smackdown on all sorts of people. Because of these success stories, WWE Films, in collaboration with Teenage Production Crew, are going to greenlight three upcoming projects for the future. However, seeing as their previous films have all lost money, they want to, they want to take three well-loved and famous scripts and recast wrestlers into the parts of every character. So I've got three, um, three very famous... Uh, where we've got to play a film and a game here. So I'll unleash them separately and you can recast wrestlers into parts or if you're feeling daring, you can try and improvise um, scenes and dialogues if you really want to. Um, okay, our first one open to everyone is Romeo and Juliet, the classic Shakespearean play, Romeo and Juliet. Beth and Punk. I'll say uh, Hornswoggle and AJ Lee, just so they can save money and not actually have AJ up in a balcony. John Morrison, Molina. The two heads of the families in Romeo and Juliet would be Vince McMahon and Eric Bischoff, uh, respectively. AJ and Evan Bourne, because both of them are probably virgins and... Uh, it would probably end up being mutual masturbation for the both of them. Well, somebody has to say it. So, um, <coughs> May Young and Mark Henry. <laughs> nice. Uh, the, for the CM Punk, uh, Beth, CM Punk's Mercutio will obviously be Cole Cabana. Hulk Hogan and an oil painting of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, anyone got any more? Robert Roode oh. and the Decent King team. <laughs> it's it's the uh, Prince! WWE Championship. <laughs> I it's missed that the one, so what did you say? John Cena and the WWE Championship. <laughs> okay. But that never, it does how, how will they, how will they kill it? <laughs> <laughs> and Ricardo Rodriguez. Has Rodriguez. Has been killed. Bark off. <laughs> Ricardo Rodriguez yes. and Alberto Del Rio. Table and <laughs> table and chair with ladder as the father. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, the prince. Move... It's the original gangster, the prince. Let's move on. Let's do our film. Uh, the film we've chosen this week is Toy Story. So uh, replacing wrestlers in roles for Toy Story. Oh fuck the smoking guns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Bob Holly is uh, Buzz because Buzz thinks he's real and actually a real toy. So why can't I just Alabama slam you hardcore or just like no sell you? <laughs> I was actually going to put Buzz as CM Punk or reverse because he always shouts, I'm flying when he's doing the clothesline when he's only just falling with style. <laughs> Woody is um, what's his, Jerry the King Lawler because Jer Jerry the King Lawler raped a girl in 1993. Tyler Rex is T-Rex. <laughs> I'll say, um, how about Dixie Carter as Andy because she, she just has no idea. Mr. Potato Head as Sin Cara whenever he gets slapped by Mrs. Potato Head who is uh, Rosa Mendez. Mrs. Potato Head as Stan Hansen and Mr. Potato Head as Vader because his eye keeps on popping out. <laughs> <laughs> Lotso Lotso Bear Lotso Huggin Bear as Randy Orton because obviously all the all the fans like him, but nobody knows that he's an absolute douche on the inside. <laughs> the okay. Smack, the Ron Smackdown undercard as the small the small green soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Ted DiBiase as the piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Okay, um, let's move on to our game, um, which will be one of the uh, most story heavy games of the. Uh, the last 10 years. Uh, heavy Rain. Heavy Rain. Uh, oh characters in Heavy Rain. I... <laughs> so, who here has in fact played Heavy Rain? <laughs> yep, Me, not it's me. like my favourite video Two game. All I know is about Jason. Press X to Jason. Wait, so press <laughs> X to Jason. That would Jason. be uh, Sin Cara? No. When, when Jason is not on screen, everyone must be asking, where the hell is Jason? <laughs> Oh, so it's definitely... So Cena is Jason. Press X to Cena. That's John a point Morrison. for the, uh, Actually, point for the like audience. Press X to C not. John um, Morrison per... as the first murder victim, because I'm sure he was buried. Ooh. Um, Kurt Angle would totally be that old cop, because in that movie where he plays a serial killer rapist, he looks just like the cop. I can't remember the cop's name. That's how much I care about the game. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's two points the audience has gained, so the audience are on four points at the moment. Um, let's bring <laughs> We're that... making a comeback. <laughs> let's uh, bring that round to the audience to, wins. to a close. <laughs> I'm pretty Lots sure that points. most of the competitors didn't know that game. <laughs> yes, and we should. We should, we were trying to think of a, of a of a good game that most people Go would know. Go Gears of War three or something. Gears of War three would have been fucking you know fantastic. I would have just said Marcus Phoenix Batista. No, it would have. <laughs> yeah. would have no, to might you just right. do full out New Vegas? Yeah. Plenty of characters who aren't all grizzled, scowly people in fridges. Okay, um, let's bring that back. Chino is Mario. <laughs> Something on Jeff Hardy's mushrooms. Right. Let's bring the round to a close. Um, let's have a look at the scores, which are at the moment on forty-two points. The Alphas and Omegas still in the lead. Um, just behind our Japanese tables on 36 points. Um, it's getting interesting. Let's see if they can keep up uh, this dominating streak. And... Oh, sorry. It's on four points. Sorry. I, sh I should, <laughs> should say that as well. The order's on four points. You may cheer for yourselves. Woo! Yay! Yay. <laughs> they sound so enthusiastic. Okay, let's move on to our next round, which is our pay-per-view round, which is all about WWE expanding its brand recognition. Um, I'm trying to think who is left to answer. I believe... Me. I believe it's, it's Mince. Uh, Mince and Terrorizing. Mince and Terrorizing. Excellent. Okay, well, here Squash. is... Squash. <laughs> here is your question uh, this Sunday at Vengeance Cody Rhodes faces Randy Orton in retaliation for the brutal beatdown Orton gave him several weeks ago on Smackdown last Monday on Raw Cody Rhodes clearly having a flashback to his days working at Lidl placed a paper bag over Orton's head and asked if he wanted a receipt with WWE always looking to expand its brand why don't they just create a WWE grocery store what wrestlers would work in which, you know, areas of the store? And what would the food items be on sale? Let's go to those uh, slightly behind. Let's go to Terrorizing 
first. Uh, WWE grocery store. Well, I think John Morrison would have to have a job there since he is already jobbing. Um, let's see. Uh, Triple H would, of course, have to be the COO because if he can't be the COO of um, the WWE brand overall, then he'll obviously want to still be in the spotlight, and that looks like it's the only way. Um, let's see. I would say Mark Henry would have to work as the bodyguard. Um. <laughs> It's a grocery store. <laughs> it's a bodyguard in a grocery store. Yeah, you know, people might try and steal the ice cream bars. <laughs> ah, yeah, there would have to be no ice cream bars, of course. Um, and that's it. I got nothing. Okay, it was a it's valiant nothing. effort. It's got nothing, man. It's got nothing at all. Let's go over to the other side. Let's go to I've forgotten Mince. already. Mints. Mints, your, uh, I should say supermarket, not grocery store. That's terribly American of me. Guess who wrote this question? Sorry. <laughs> Spices and foods, Alberto Del Rio. All the best in Mexico. Kofi Kingston, fresh fruit ale. Because he's black and he's from Kingston or Ghana or wherever the fuck he's from. So <laughs> he would deal with bananas. That's totally racist and all. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Uh, flashback to 2003, the janitor would be Lance Storm. Anyone gets that, you know, little quote, <laughs> well done. Uh, Mark Henry, uh, fresh poultry, all black people like chicken. Uh, <laughs> CM Punk, uh, one of your magazines, the comic book aisle. Obviously, it's clobbering time. And... John Laurinaitis on the tills because nobody gives a fuck and doesn't want to speak to the people that tills. I'd have to say, I think we should rename the Alphas and Omega Team Controversial. Um... Team Goldberg. <laughs> I, like, I like the idea that every time you go to the tills in this grocery store, you, have to, you get I am the Executive Vice President of <laughs> Shut up and rain up and shut up. I am the executive <laughs> vice president of this till. That'll be five ninety five. Now for sale, Mark Henry's chocolate drops. <laughs> An extra point for Shout the audience, you, all right? Well, you don't have God, enough money. Why the fuck didn't I get You this don't question. have enough money. It's okay. You can do a favor for me. Unzips fly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's get to the end of this round. Um, let's have a look at the scores. Still ahead. It's you know it's like total domination here. You know, um, the Alphas and Omegas oh, with, 40, with 47 points uh, behind. All 40 points are Japanese tables incorporated. We move into our final round, oh, which is spontaneous promotion, where two where the teams try and make up some final points before heading into defending the indefensible. Two members of each team will randomly select a wrestler, situation, and wild card by using the letters A to D. Uh, bonus points will be given for good impressions and remaining in character as much as possible. Um, so, teams, captains, who have you picked to, picked to be spontaneously promoted? Uh, let's go to um, uh, Goldeneye first. Who have you picked for spontaneous promotion? Seeing as I, as I usually do again this round, me and... You two can decide um, who wants to be the other person. Like, who's good in... in I'll go. All right, and JP, and I guess Terror Rising is doing Defend the Invincible. Okay. Oh. Um, and let's go over to the other side. Omega, who have you picked? Well, gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'd like to try my hand at DTI, and I think you do a much better job than I would anyway. So I'm going to go with my two alphas, Mince and Manic. Mince oh, yeah. and Manic. Fair enough. Cool, okay. Um, right, well, seeing as uh, team, uh, Japanese Tables Incorporated are slightly behind, they'll get first pick. Uh, here is this week's theme uh, with JR 
gone from commentary play by play is now officially dead in wrestling. So in memory of good old JR, this week we have a special edition of Spontaneous Pro Promotion. JR has been at the centre of many events over the past few years, delivering different tones of voice to his commentary as events unfold. So each of our wildcards this week are dedicated to a particular moment that JR has commentated on. Um, and I would like our panellists to bring out that emotion within their promo. Uh, so let's go to Goldeneye first. Uh, you have free pick of the board. What is your letter combination for this week? CDC. CDC. Okay, uh, you are Jim Ross. Uh, you are the situation is you are uh, uh, WWE Raw is there's a match currently going on. You can, uh, you know, make the match go along. Uh, being sponsored by the Taco Bell XL Burrito, um, and your JR style is just just regular good old JR, but you must use the phrase "source it" at least once. So in your own time. Hello and and welcome back to WWE Raw. We are back live with a match between Jack Swagger and Zack Ryder. And oh, Zack Ryder goes for the Rough Rider but misses and he ends up getting power bombed by Jack Swagger. This match is brought to you by Taco Bell, the new Double XL Chalupa. It's big. It's big. It's big. You need, it's so big, you need Black Ops and you need a closer. Taco Bell, sauce it. Oh, and, oh, and the Rough Rider and Zack Ryder wins. And, okay, where's my paycheck? <laughs> a, a slightly money-orientated version of JR there. Okay, uh, let's flip over to the other side. Let's go to Mince, uh, your letter combination this week. BBC. BBC. You can't pick C. You can't pick C. Uh, BBD. BBD. Okay. BBD. <laughs> okay. Um, you are uh, Jim Ross. Uh, the situation is you're doing play-by-play -play commentary for the movie The Room, uh, starring Tommy Wiseau. And uh, the JR style we would like you to do is Stone Cold kicking Bischoff's ass at No Way Out 2003. So that's Jim Ross. Play by play for the room and stone cold, stone cold. Is that the one with, uh, what do you call it? The one where Steve Austin came back? It was the two, the uh, five one five. No, it was the uh, that was the it was the one where he where he had to face Bishop at No Way Out. It was when Stone Cold came back, but in two thousand and three. Hold on a second to actually get that because I can't fucking remember. Stone Cold, actually, I'm... Stone Cold. A stone cold, a slobber knocker. Oh, by God Almighty, he's gone into the room. Oh, when he's kicking up, he's stamping a mud hole in his ass. Oh, my God. Go get him, Austin. Go get him. By good God Almighty. Oh, I was about to say Thundering Typhon. Is that right, guy? Uh. Yeah, oh, he's whipping him like a government mule, and now he's dragging him out of the room and down the stairs. By God, he's taking him to the ring. Stunner, stunner, oh, by God, Gerald, oh, fuck you. I'm going to go down and get myself a nice go Steve Weiser. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he's tearing him apart, Lisa. By God. Okay, let's jump back over to the other side. Let's go to uh, JP, uh, your letter combina combination for this week. Triple A. Triple A? God. C. This is all copy me when I... That's three A's in a row. A -A. Three A's. Okay. Triple um, A. Triple A. You might be surprised. Um, uh, you are Jim Ross <laughs> doing the oh. Hall of Fame induction speech for, Bra for Braden Walker. Um, and your wild card, uh, your JR star this week, is the Mankind Falling Off the Top of the Hell in the Cell spot. So that's uh, Jim Ross, Braden Walker Hall of Fame, and Mankind Falling Off the Hell in the Cell. When you're ready. I gotta remember who Brandon Walker was. It was Chris Harris in WWE. Knock, knock, who's there, Braden Walker? Braden Walker. And I'm gonna kick your teeth in. And I'm going oh, to yes. oh. Oh, really? Ooh. Okay, um, you ready? Well, 
Yeah, I, I had I had to just remember that because I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind um, of the joke. <laughs> well, we are here at the Hall of Fame induction, and we're we're here to induct this fine man, Braden Walker, into the WWE Hall of Fame, and everybody knows that this guy was good, but. Oh my God! Is is that Braden Walker on top of the the state on top of the set that we got here? What is he? What is he doing? On? Oh my God! Oh my God! It's the Undertaker! The Undertaker's got Braden Walker! He's he's gonna choke slam him! Oh my God! He just choke slammed him through the announcer table that we have set up here randomly! Oh my God! <laughs> there's there's blood everywhere! They killed him! Oh my God! Oh, people are attending to him right now. And folks, Braden Walker. Uh, people may have known him for a brief time, brief time from some random promotion in Tennessee, uh, but uh, we we're, we're checking on him right now. And oh my God, he's getting back up. He's getting back. He's climbing back up the the set. He's climbing back up to meet the Undertaker. By God, he's fighting with the Undertaker. The Undertaker's got him in a choke slam again. By God, he just choke slammed him through the set, through the entire set. He's dead. What the hell? Someone stop this! By God! Stare- I mean- oh! <laughs> oh! Take her win, lol. <laughs> was that he was or Ken Shamrock? So, <laughs> so he was posthumously inducted? Uh... Sure, let's go with that. He's the first- well, actually, I think he ended, ends up being the first zombie inductee. Um, so <laughs> no, I'm not sure if that ended up. By God, no, I'm not sure if Hulk Hogan him. takes that first. No, that they're was, inducting that him. That was, that was God, with Khan as my witness, he was holding him back. <laughs> okay, let's go to uh, last but no means least. Is Manic Missing to open? Unfortunately, you get the slim pickings. You don't even get to choose. Um, surprisingly, you are Jim Ross. Um, <laughs> And your situation is Glacier, uh, the famous WCW superstar, is returning, and you have to sell him as though it's the greatest return of all time. Um, and you have to do this as heel, JR, um, from all the way back in the olden times when JR turned heel for a good few weeks. So that's Jim Ross. Was, was, was this his heel turn when he bought the fake Razor Ramon, or the heel turn where he had his own announce table and Steve Williams? Go with the heel announce table and Steve Williams one. I think that's the one we want. Uh, yeah, so Jim Ross, Glacier, and Heel JR. Uh, away you go. Well, welcome back to Monday Night JR, free of Michael Cole and his bitch partner, Jerry Lawler. I always hated you, you fucking pedophile. <laughs> but anyway, and oh, and Cena's out here. Yay, the the champion, the Doctor of Fugonomics, and who's that? By God, it's Glacier! Glacier is back! Glacier is in the WWE for the first time! And oh, Cena! See, he's in trouble now! Super kick! By God, he just knocked him out cold! Cena's been knocked out cold by Glacier! <laughs> by God almighty, this is the greatest night in the history of our sport! Wait a minute! Who's... Wait a minute. Uh, sorry, there's some confusion. A fight scene is... The hat is pulled off. It is revealed to be Tony Schiavone. In a JR <laughs> costume. Swerve. The swerves keep Oklahoma, on coming. Oklahoma! Oklahoma! <laughs> okay, let's have... Moving to Guerrero. And zombie... Zombie Steve Williams kills Tony Schiavone. The end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, let's have a look at this stick, week's fi stick, stick. This week's final scores uh, on 56 points. Uh, are the Alphas and the Omegas Mother of uh, God. completely dominating this this team this week? Um, and just yes. going with, with Japanese tables on 48 points. Um, but it's not over yet, because we do have Defend the Indefensible, which this week, I believe, is between terrorizing and... No, no, we won't sell it, because Omega we now. are oh. Japanese tables. Terror... <laughs> 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 They're not gonna break. Three points. 
We don't. It should break be a three-point joke. Most um, people, we only break for Masato Tanaka. We definitely <laughs> don't break for MVP. <laughs> okay, it's between Terror Rising and Omega BR this week. Um, defend the Indefensible is where one member of each panel steps forward to defend their honour of their team for 30 seconds. The catch is that the statement they have to defend is completely indefensible. Uh, so the victor will essentially be the person who does gives their best attempts at trying to do so. And I've just realised I don't have the stopwatch on. <laughs> and what well prepared this week? Okay, um... Seeing as uh, Omega, you were your team was in the lead and won. Would you like to go first or second this week? Oh, uh, I'll go ahead and go first. How about it? You go first. Okay. Would you like statement A or statement B? Statement A. Statement A. Okay. Your statement for thirty seconds is the following: Sting versus Hogan this Sunday was a textbook classic five star match. Time starts now. Oh, uh, come on, give me a break. Hulk Hogan is it. I mean, everybody wants to see Hulkamania to this day. When he rips off that shirt and he rips off that girdle and he does that point, he goes, you, and he takes that one powerful step because he can't walk too great, and then he hulks up and he beats the hell out of such classic superstars like Gunner. I mean, Hulk Hogan is to America what David Hasselhoff is to Germany and America. <laughs> you have two seconds. One, Hogan for zero. <laughs> right, okay. You asked me last week. No, 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 it's a completely different question because last week was presumptive. It was it was conditional. It was Sting versus Hogan uh will, will be. be. Not 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 was a uh was lazy a booking is lazy. Yes, it was lazy booking, but shh. Uh, Tara. <laughs> Tara, are you way. ready to step up to the plate? Indeed. Okay, your statement this week is Mark Henry and the Big Show's match on Sunday should be turned into a knitting contest. Your time starts now. Brilliant. Well, of course it should. I mean, we've all seen Mark Henry in that uh, woolly sweater. I'm sure he's just great at knitting. And Big Show, we've seen him with that beanie hat, so I'm sure he's great at knitting too. So it would quite frankly be a five-star knitting classic. Uh... <laughs> They would both go on for 10 minutes. They would break the table with the amount of um, thread they used. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, this might, this might be controversial this week, but I have to say, uh, this week's winner of Def The Indefensible, by a slight margin, I would, I would say, is terrorizing. Oh my god! It's the boy Oh boy So cold! Purely, so cold! Purely for the fact that he said it would be a five star knitting contest, which obviously implies he's seen some four stars, <laughs> three stars in his time. So, um. Hasselhoff screwed me again. Hasselhoff screwed you again. Um, thank you very much for listening to this edition of Shoot Promo. Uh, our teams were. Uh, Japanese Tables Incorporated, which included GoldenEye. Yeah, my performance today just proved that last week was just a fluke. <laughs> rising. The underdog dream has come true. <laughs> uh, JP. Nah, I got nothing to say, except... FUCK! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Alpha and Omegas, which featured Omega BR... You know, I promised myself I'd work two Hasselhoff jokes into the show tonight, and it was it was my undoing. It was it, it wasn't uh the always minty fresh mints. Ah, uh, dude, I've always stood up for black people. It's no worth getting stabbed over a seat. <laughs> <laughs> You're horrible. Oh wow. my god. This just three... in shoot promo cancelled after three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, good thing we have an explicit tag. And finally, Manic Misanthrope. I blame everyone but myself. <laughs> cool. I was your host, Red Reddington. Thank you for listening. Mid, stop the recording! Quick. Shoot Promo is filmed in front of a live studio audience. For information on how to become an audience member or participant in the game, please contact us on Twitter at twitter.com slash shootpromoshow. For highlights from this show and others, please go to youtube.com slash shootpromoshow.
Thanks for listening.